I've got a special surprise for you today, but first, Roger and I are both masked up. This is my BFF, Roger. You guys have met him before, but we're outside. It's very windy, so you can hear us better. Over the wind, we are gonna take our masks off and we'll be standing at a good social distance. So- We'll do our best. We'll do our best. So Roger is a wonderful garden designer. We have worked together on different projects before. And today, I just recently got um, a little preview that I'm very excited about of some new Southern Living Plant introductions that are gonna be coming out next year, you guys. So I think you can definitely get on a wait list or put them on your wish list for next year because you're definitely going to want some of these. Definitely. So there's some cool, there's some really cool plants. Some cool plants and, uh, and different uh, varieties of things you and I have worked with in the past right. before. But Roger is great at styling. He is really great at use of color. And so I've asked him to help us with some companion plantings for these Southern Living plants. So we've got three different groupings today, which would work either in container gardens right. or in the ground, uh -huh. um, however. Or containers in the bed. Or containers in the <laughs> bed, know. which is a favorite <laughs> right. of yours and yes. mine. Yes. I may have learned that from you, oh, okay. <laughs> Roger. So we're gonna start over here with some gardenias. So Roger, if you would show us and the light is a little bit variable today, you guys. So, um, so hopefully you'll be able to see what we're talking about. And because these are brand new, I, I need my cheat sheet, Roger. Mm -hmm. So this is a foolproof gardenia. Uh, I love it, this tiny foliage. Don't you love it? It's great. So it, neat looking. It looks a little bit, it reminds me a little bit of like a distillium or mm -hmm. even a little ollie olive. Uh-huh, right. Or, um, but I love, I love the texture of the foliage. And anything that slight, even slightly resembles boxwood, I love. Right. Okay, so this creates fra uh, fragrant gardens. Compact, easy to grow which is why I think you decided to put them in a pot. Right, right. Okay. And it, it, one of the things about the pot's kind of nice, it elevates it a little bit, so the fragrance is closer to your nose. Yes, yes, would be great by a door. Oh, it would oh, be great by yeah, a door. Yeah. Or any place you're gonna be walking past on a yes. daily basis or sitting for yeah. morning coffee or something like that. Yeah, that had a bit of a breeze oh, and the definitely. scent yeah. of gardenia, right. yeah. I love that. You're so right. By a, a, on a patio or a terrace right. where you're really going to be sitting and enjoying it. Okay, Roger, this, because it doesn't have any flowers on it now, but it puts out double pure white fragrant blooms in late spring and it reblooms, right. importantly, through fall. So show us, oh, and it's going to get three to four feet high, three feet wide, and it's hardy to zone 7A. Yeah, so, so. It, sounds like, it sounds like a great plant. Well, the, our, the gardenias are just so elegant. And that white bloom is so pretty. Yeah. You almost don't need any other color with it. Yeah. But I was thinking, you know, this um, asparagus fern, the foxtail fern, oh, yes. would be great. Just a slightly different texture. The new growth is always um, is always such a light yeah. green. Yes. As it matures, it'll start to cascade down over the pot. I love this pale terracotta pot. Oh, I do too. With yeah. the, makes the the dark green foliage really mm -hmm. pop, and it's just. This is such an elegant form and just such a nice, neat. I mean, it's beautiful without any flowers on but, it, but, but just imagine it. that with. And, and how many containers do you have in there of We've got those three, gardenias? Three gallon pots okay. in here now okay. to fill it. Yeah. But based on the size, if you wanted to wait a while, you could probably do one, do one. in here and it would eventually mature to fill this whole pot. But you and I are about instant gratification. Right, yes. Now, the, the other thing is, from a cultural standpoint, this pot is huge. Right. So you're not going to be a slave to watering and it is just more like a small garden uh -huh. really than a, than well, a container planting. I've got some of these pots in, in my garden and... Um, is that real? It's real or, terracotta. It is. Gosh, yeah, it's so gorgeous. You've gotta, you gotta be careful with uh, freezing, right. make sure it's not sitting directly on soil or directly on concrete. Yeah. I always elevate it with at least like a little quarter inch uh -huh. tile yes. so that it drains. And then um, I go out and brush mine down with yogurt frequently. To get and I've it. got some great moss growing yeah. on mine. The, yes. uh, yeah, it's all about the patina. Right. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about the needs of any kind of gardenias. Even these are starting to show some yellowing leaves. So 
I typically use like a holly tone, a spoma holly tone mm -hmm. to give it the acidic requirements. Would you do anything special for these as you're potting these up? Uh, I think that's a good, a okay. good um, solution. And you know, um, just adding a little peat moss mm -hmm. in there always helps uh, balance the acidity, also helps with uh, moisture control. Might want to with something like a gardenia in here, maybe even mix in some of the moisture control uh, beads mm -hmm. that help, you know, especially, uh, you know, to get it over the summer. Right. So you don't need quite such a frequent watering yeah, regimen. Yeah, that's a great idea. Now, if it were me, and I think you too, um, I would probably maybe put two pots of those foxtail ferns in there, really cream it in there. And then some kind of, what would you recommend is, is like a spilling white, some kind of. Mmm, gosh, I mean, you know, um, these don't, you don't want these in full sun in mm -hmm, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. other parts of the country they can be in full sun, but uh, for the summer, you know, white scavola. Oh, would that be would great. be beautiful. If it's in um, uh, not too full of sun, uh, white variegated ivy would yes, be great spilling yes. over that. Yes, even some, maybe even some white mandevilla yeah. kind uh -huh. of cascading over the side right, would be right. pretty, because I love um, that classic combination of the uh, green and white. Silver dragon, if you're in more sun, silver dragon liriope, mm -hmm. it won't cascade a lot. But oh, at least yeah. you'll get that bright yeah. uh, white variegation on the, on the leaves down there all about it i love this combo so you guys this is the the number one new introduction this is foolproof gardenia and of course these same design principles would work with jubilation um, or any of the southern living gardenias right. uh scent amazing gardenia would also work with those but this is a new a new variety that i just love love that top pot okay so now let's come over here to our second stellar plant. Now, this right here, I have in my own garden, and I once did a, yeah, turn it around a little bit so you could see these gorgeous flowers. The color is just amazing. This is the early wonder uh, camellia, and I even, last year my Thanksgiving table was centered around this. Oh, really? Because they were in bloom. Uh -huh. We have over here, Roger, if you would show them this flower, this, this is, is Alabama a, Beauty. That almost looks like, gosh, like a peony or something. I mean, it is just really gorgeous. Uh -huh. And then, is this the same? Yeah, Alabama yeah, Beauty. Yeah, Alabama Beauty. Now that one is crimson and clover. The oh, blossom excuse we just me. looked okay. at is crimson and clover. Okay, and that's Alabama, Alabama Beauty. Because it's a single, and then the Alabama Beauty is like a little double. Yeah. I love that. I, I kind of like that single one because it's too. so unique. Right, right. It's so unique. Uh, love that. So any of these would work in this combo. So uh, talk a little bit about the planter you selected and the plant, the plants that would make good marriage partners for it. Well, we've got a substantial pot here, and one of the things we've done with this pot is we've cut the bottom of it out. So whenever we're doing a, a larger shrub right. that we want to get maximum life out of. A lot of times we'll come in and cut the bottom out. That way the roots of the plant can just grow down into, mm -hmm. the, into your garden. And of course this would be one that would be sitting in a bed. So you could use this for small trees, right, for right. Yeah. Uh, Japanese maple, right. you know, yeah. or big boxwoods or something like that. Because any plant in a pot is going to have a limited shelf life. Yeah. At some point, five, six years down the road maybe, it's going to start getting too root bound and it's not, and it's going to start to crater and yeah. you're going to have to replace it by, by cutting the bottom out. It will extend the life yeah, on it. Yeah, extends the life of But it. this is one of those uh, place that where you want it. Right. Because it's yes. going to be difficult to move. Yeah, because you don't want to move it. Then. Do you think you'd have to raise that up on pot feet since it's got a hole cut well, in the bottom or not? Uh, no, but you do. Um, because you don't want to have a gap that, between this and the soil, you know, because those roots yeah, are going to be going very down. common sense. But it's good to go ahead and put it maybe on a base of gravel just for better drainage so you don't have moisture trapped at yeah. the bottom of that pot when it freezes in the winter. Roger, like me, is as enthusiastic about gravel <laughs> <laughs> um, as, well, anyone, as anyone I know. Okay, so if, if you were going to plant this in here, this early wonder, gardenia would be well, brilliant in there. I think it would be beautiful. I love the scale of it. Yeah. And you know, you and I do this both. A lot of times the big the big plant doesn't have to be in the center of the pot. No, it doesn't. If this if if this is is 
in the, it is open and you can walk around all 360 degrees of it, yeah, you might yeah. want it in the center. But if you've got it in front of the house, in front of yeah. a wall or something, then the, pl the plant can be positioned at the back yeah. of the pot and it gives you so much more room to play with in the front. Yeah, just like a, just like a flower arrangement. The other thing that I like about this idea, because I'm not going to lie, um, I think any kind of camellia in Oklahoma is hard to get established. It is. And I think that placing it in a huge pot like this with basically perfectly kind of artificial <laughs> conditions that it will probably be easier to get established in a huge pot. I wouldn't do it in a small pot. No, would no, you? definitely not. Yeah, no. but I think it might make it easier to get established and really send out root growth in a in a container almost, and even in our garden, no matter how much we amend right. our clay soil. Well, and that's the thing with a you want a big enough pot that you're not it's not drying out every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. You know, you want to be able to water it maybe at the height of the summer maybe twice a week yeah you know i, I don't want to be out there watering every day yeah on right. pots but the other thing to consider i mean it's a it's a pretty plant even when it's not in bloom uh -huh. just the you know the glossy dark green leaves right and so it's perfect foil for just about anything but then also taking into consideration when it's blooming um what's going to look good at that point we picked out this um let's just put this in the pot and pretend like it's growing in there. Right. It'd be a little taller. Yep. But uh, I think this lemon cypress would look great. The soft, it's not a shiny foliage. Mm -hmm. You've got the beautiful shiny foliage right. on the camellia. But this lemon cypress, I like the contrast of the colors. And here in Oklahoma, the lemon cypress, I've had really good luck with it in pots and containers now over the winter. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say. They tend, they tend to crater in the summer. In the summer. But in the winter, so what about, um, so it, for, for me, I kind of like to do that papa bear, mama bear, baby bear uh -huh. thing with pots. So I guess uh, you could do a mama bear that had right. yeah, yeah. some of these exactly. in it separate and then, um, and then move them to a much more shaded, because tell me what your experience is. I found that, that my camellias, they want protection, but they need sun to bloom, so it's kind of it's kind of yeah, that. Well, I mean, definitely protection from the hot yeah, west sun. Yeah, yeah. Protection from the wind yes. is important yes. with something with broadleaf evergreen like yeah. that. Yeah. But oh my gosh, look at these blooms. I know. Is that worth it, Stuart? Can you capture? Look at that. And the buds are equally as magnificent. I think. Um, and you know, with, with a plant like this, I think this is so stately looking. Yes. Almost, for me, just filling around the pot with this dwarf Mondo. Yes, yes. Because I like, I know, you know, the old adage of the, the, fill, the thrill or the filler uh, yeah, and the spiller. Yeah. I've kind of gotten away from that. I don't care for the spiller a lot of times because I like the architecture of the, of the pot. pot. Well, and so when you've got just this beautiful green, yes, dark green, solid, yes, um, yes. mondo grass covering that, and you still see the rim of the pot, it's got a strong architectural presence. The other thing is, is it doesn't detract from the beauty of the plant itself, right, right. and it makes it look like a garden. It makes it look like it is, it is literally growing, growing out of ground cover, and that will be beautiful year-round. Right. As long as it didn't get too much sun. Yes, too much sun, uh -huh. which is the exact same conditions that the camellia right. that the camellias and like. Watering requirements, I think they're really similar. Uh, the other thing that I like is is doing something simple like this versus let's say we had some I don't know pink pansies in here or something. I think when you do something simple like that, it gives it a more modern feel and a Definitely. little bit more masculine feel if if you're wanting something sleeker more contemporary uh but it's it's it really is i think well then you mentioned like doing pansies in here at, at some point digging around these roots is not going to be good for the plant uh, that, you know, especially something like a camellia or an azalea it's yes. fairly shallow yeah, okay. rooted. great so that's a so great putting tip. an evergreen like an mm -hmm. evergreen ground, ground cover in there to keep it solid so you're not messing with the, with the uh, digging around the roots of the plant and disturbing them. So the idea of the adding complementary yes. colors in another pot nearby, I think is great. I, so great. I, I think that's, like that that's right. And I, 
I'm glad you pointed that out because it's something I don't always think about is, is the damage you can do by constantly trying to upgrade kind right. of your pot with, with other stuff. And I think it takes away from the statuesque grandeur of a magnificent specimen like, uh -huh. like uh, and this easy wonder. when this thing is blooming, you really don't need competing blooms. No, no, I don't think so either. But how gorgeous of an evergreen is that going to oh, be right, even in the wintertime? Okay, so we obviously love that and the Alabama beauty. But that, I tell you, that crimson and, what was it, crimson and clover? Crimson and clover, okay, yeah. Okay, that is really that is really cool. Let's take another look at that flower. Um, and I don't, Roger, I know you do this. I do it either in your garden journal, on your wish list. I keep a list of plants. They may not be available now, but they'll be available next year. And I do keep a wish list, especially of plants that will perform really well. Right. So, okay, so let's, um, let's move on now to a little bit a little bit more color. So tell us about this combo that you have going going here. Well, this is a fun way of combining plants in different pots. So you can move the pots around. Uh -huh, you, know? uh -huh. you don't have to replant. You can just like have another pot. I mean, uh, off to the side, and when it looks good, pull it over here uh, for your grouping. And if it starts looking bad, you yeah pull out another one. And yeah. this is another one of the Southern Living um, plant introductions. What uh, one of it? You know what? It's, now, a, it's all I know is it's adorable. This little little golden it's like holly, a gold easy touch, easy touch, or uh, uh, soft touch, or something. But it's it's a wonderful golden holly. It looks like a boxwood doppelganger, kind of. Right, or a, like a like a dwarf yopon. Yes, kind of halfway between yes. a, a, a boxwood, a wintergreen boxwood, and a and a yopon holly, but that color is just great. The chartreuse color, and this uh -huh. is a color. Uh, Roger has a magnificent garden. He is very finicky about the colors that you use. You have only, <laughs> you have only yellows, whites. I, I've opened it up now. Oh, you've opened it up? I actually up. have pink in the garden Oh, now. you've become, yes. uh, you've, you've <laughs> become more egalitarian. Odd, but not anymore. Uh, but these are colors that he predominantly uses a lot in his, in his landscape. I, one of my favorite color combos of all time is, is blue or purple, azure, whatever, along with chartreuse. Me too. And um, Roger, this does that. Ideally, I think I would have this pot in this grouping a little bit bigger. Just a uh, little bit and, more statuesque. And a little, maybe a little taller. And a too. little taller. Right. But this is that mama bear, papa bear, but, I mean, baby bear even thing. Just lifting it up on bricks. Yeah, you know, yeah, but, yeah. Right, Fake it. Help. Yeah, Fake I it mean, if you just, can't make it. Yeah. So, but, so talk to me about your plant selections here. Well, I mean, I love the azure pansy, and then this uh, uh, purple pansy with the with the bl the blotch, blotch yeah. the darker purple blotch, uh, is cool. And I love this winter bore kale. I do too. The kind of grayish with yes. the blues is awesome, and then it really makes this yellow pop pop uh -huh. uh, and i like the texture of this yes you know, this is such a tight fine little texture and this is just like an ostrich plume next yeah. to it yeah and so um this is one of my favorite kales it's really tough you know a lot of kales and cabbages will crater yep. about into december or january this one you usually get tired of it and yank it out like in June. Yeah. Now that one is easy to grow from seed. I have grown oh, it, it from okay. yeah, I have grown uh -huh. it from seed several times. The other thing that I like about this combination, whether you use this winter borer or you use cabbages or whatever, mm -hmm. is in the spring if they bloom yellow, right. yeah, then it, it makes a wonderful uh -huh. uh, complement to to this holly. So then um, and I, I love the, the way that this speaks to this. We've got just a hint of the color mm -hmm. that's in this pot. In this pot, tell me what you would use then and would replace these with in the summertime. Um, for this, probably, I'd probably do uh, purple scavola. Mm -hmm. that new? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the new lavender and purple? Kind Ooh, of I haven't. Color? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, that would be great in here. Um, oh, Maybe some else? Angelonia. Um, yeah, I'd probably, or even, you know, uh, I think white would be a great combination mm -hmm. here. White pentas would be a great, uh, great addition to this. That would be beautiful. And, you know, the other thing is, is if you kind of wanted a, a different look, you could even get 
another columnar evergreen here. That'd be awesome, yeah. That would uh -huh. be um, maybe uh, one of the uh, nightlights chemiciparus. That's a southern living mm -hmm. plant. Or um, I just think it could be really pretty, but a, a conifer. But today. this is Well, that's true. <laughs> so let me not detract from this adorable <laughs> little golden holly. Um, the other thing is, is because you and I like this color combination, we, we sometimes shortchange, I think, those primary color lovers who love orange and who love reds and this could be really oh, fabulous uh -huh. too with those really um those colors that stand up a right. lot more to oklahoma's strong uh -huh. sun well even even for a winter arrangement you know some of that the uh, kind of rose there's a uh, a line of rose colored pansies yes and, yes um that gorgeous orange pansy oh yeah and, and orange um, violas, mm -hmm. you know, the texture, you know, having vi maybe violas up here and pansies down here, the contrast between the okay, two Okay, you know, it just this brings to mind, if you would reach for that Mondo grass over there, mm -hmm. Roger, I just had an inspiration. How fun would it be to use black Mondo grass I, maybe right. in here with some of those orange violas and orange pansies uh -huh. and that would give you a completely different vibe be perfect right. for halloween and great into spring and would give a whole different look and a whole different personality well, or even, uh, along those lines so we're kind of getting into different light considerations but the some of the black um hellebores oh yeah yeah you know that yeah. dark green leaf yes and then the black blooms yep well, obviously, Roger, <laughs> Roger <laughs> and I could go. Yeah, I know we do get carried away. I'm sorry if this went if this went overly long, but some of these new Southern Living plants are just a great point of inspiration. You can do so many things with them, Roger. Thank you, my friend. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to start using some of these in our projects. Oh, I know. I can't either. But make sure some of these are new introductions, so put them on your wait list for Definitely next year. Yes.